Thank you very much. Um, okay, well, let me do this. And uh, I'm not a da data scientist, I'm not an expert in machine learning, but this is a da data conference. Uh, um, I'll, I'll start with a joke, right? So the statistician walks into an average bar and the bartender saying like, you know, we don't serve your kind here. And the uh, statistician is like, you know, it's mean. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna be talking about what helps to move the data, right? So I'm not going to talk about the, you know, data algorithms or data frameworks or how you can do the optimization of your data pipelines. I'll be talking about something that usually is hidden behind the scenes and helps to achieve your, you know, ultimate goal of crunching the data, right? So I'll be talking about in infrastructure, about the projects that help to, to do this stuff, right? So um, a little bit about myself. I'm the, the uh, CEO and the founder of the Memcore IO. Uh, we're doing essentially one-click cloud delivery for in-memory uh, computing stacks. Uh, so basically, you can do all up OLTP streaming, messaging, whatever it is, with a single click on um, a few cloud providers right now. So you can provision the cluster, you can pause, resume it um, to save the costs, um, and uh, you can do all sorts of data ingest and, and processing and all. Anyway, <clears throat> so with my essentially big data Apache guy hat on, um, let's talk a little bit about the big data, right? And, and in reality, this, this whole talk should have been should have been called "size doesn't matter," but uh, you know, big is probably better, right? Anyway, so how we got into this whole big data mess, right? So um, information explosion, right? So we started all of a sudden we started seeing people wanted to collect all sorts of events and all sorts of the data pieces and 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 um, uh, bits from everything, right? So like Comcast would want to collect all the, all the data from their you know, um, uh, set-top TVs or set-top set devices, from their little modem and routers and what's not, and they would get into like gigabytes of uh, data intake on a daily basis, right? And uh, more of these companies will, will come to the, to the existence, and all of them would say, you know, we're not sure that we can actually analyze the data and make the right decisions based on our analysis because we don't know how good the analysis is, right? So we cannot use the enterprise features that are out there already uh, because they're too expensive. They cannot scale actually to, you know, whatever the data sizes we're dealing with. So um, let's figure out what to do with it, right? So we cannot ETL it properly because again, there is no tool set and stuff. Um, whatever we buy from Netizo, what's not, does not cut it because, you know, it's expensive. The updates are coming, you know, and not that satisfying pace. And, and again, I'm not picking up on Netizo here. But in general, uh, the business, pro the, the solution providers, enterprise solution providers, they do not react to the market demands as, as, as quickly as sometimes needed. So, and the most important of all is that cookie cutter solutions are not feeding everyone, right? So they, 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 they actually sort of like the same. However, customer uh, might need variances of, of, uh, of the data flows, of the you know, data patterns and stuff like this. So, and uh, here come the glorious Apache Hadoop and the whole Hadoop ecosystem. And it says, you know what? Everything is fine, it's all downhill from here. So no need to worry about anything. You can store as much data as you need to, says Apache Hadoop. Uh, let's no schema bother you because you can process it without any schema whatsoever, says whatever Apache Cassandra. Um, you can scale it anywhere, says MapReduce framework, but we already heard that MapReduce framework actually has a few uh, snuggles here and there. So, and then we've heard that once you have all the data, you can actually figure out everything about the, the data and your customers and what's not, and here comes the machine learning. But there is, as we know, lies, them lies in statistics. So we probably cannot figure out everything about everything. At any rate, interestingly enough, it's not that big, right? So if you look at uh, six months ago, um, survey from the Forrester, um, they did um, online survey of 1,800 companies, 1,800 plus companies. 
they figured out that literally there is lesser than 10% of the companies dealing with the petabyte scale data sets. I said like three companies here, of course it's not three, but you know, a little bit more than that. But still, uh, there's very few companies that deal with the huge or uh, humongous data sets. So there's Google, there's Facebook, there's Yahoo. Uh, back in the day actually at our Yahoo Hadoop cluster, we had whatever, four, four and a half thousand nodes at 21 petabyte or something like that, right? But again, you can probably count these companies with one hand. So um, about 73% of the companies actually dealing with the data sets under 99 uh, uh, terabytes. Uh, oh, actually terabytes, yeah, terabytes. So it's like, what, uh, two, two boxes rack uh, to have all your data. So why, what was the point of having the whole cluster um, doing with that, uh, dealing with the data? So if you, if you can have two boxes. Um, and, and average data size, or average enterprise data size is actually under 80 terabytes, right? So it's like my laptop has whatever, 250 uh, actually gigabytes. Uh, well, okay, so it's a little bit more than my laptop. But nonetheless, <laughs> so it's not that huge, right? So the price of the storage is actually went significantly down. The price of the memory went significantly down. So you don't need to build these huge solutions usually, right? Huge infrastructure setups to, to work with the data you, you normally deal in on a daily basis. And uh, um, interestingly enough, despite of all the hype around like no, no SQL and all, um, uh, all this stuff. So, schemas are still highly relevant, right? So people are still working with the data structures and structured data. So in the same survey, they shown that actually more than 37% of the data in enterprise data sets are represented by the structured data, right? So it's still easier to work with the structured data. It's still more, you know, customary to work with the structured data. Um, and uh, of course, the rest of the data, which is literally, you know, no SQL kind of, no, not, not, uh, uh, no structured uh, schema on read kind of stuff. Um, you can work with it with pretty much any, any tool out there, but the problem is as soon as you start copywriting these little tools uh, with one another, you need to figure out actually how to make these you know, connections, how to pass the data around, uh, around the, the, the component boundaries. And you know, new projects do not speak the DL anymore. So you need to figure out actually how to, how to deal with this stuff. Um, you keep the data in the storage, but there is no state on this data, right? So there is no state on the objects. So you don't know if the version was changed from yesterday or not, right? So I mean, like, it's good if you have the HDFS file system, which is sort of like read-only, right? So you cannot really overwrite something. You can append or truncate or completely remove the file and replace it with something else. But still, the versioning of the data in your storage is, is an important uh, characteristic, which you know, sometimes is not addressed. Uh, and of course, there is like serialization mechanism like, like Avro that, that carries around the versioning along with the data stuff and, and what's not. But again, it's all, um, all kind of loosely coupled and uh, not necessarily solve all your problems. And what are those problems essentially, right? What needs to be solved? Is it too much data? Is it like too slow for processing? Uh, do you need to do updates? Do you need to do transactions on your data, right? So is schema on read is too, too difficult? Is you know, schema on write is too restrictive and you, you're risking of losing some data? So does your SQL perform well, right? Um, do you have a visualization tools, BI tools, BA tools, you know, that kind of stuff. So what are you trying to solve? And surprisingly, actually, you have to solve all of these problems, right? So if, you, if you're trying to build a versatile enough uh, data analytic platform, you have to deal essentially with all these bits and pieces. Right? And then you start looking around and, and check what the tool, tool sets you, you can, can use. So, and here's the Apache comes, right? So Apache has this extensive set of the tools that actually are focused on dealing with the data processing, right? And, and of course, this slide particularly is not pretending to be complete, but just, just a few pieces. So you want to stream and, and store only, you know, what you need so you can go and do something like Flink, Ignite, Kafka, 
um, for the message and spark for, for micro batching, right? And then micro streaming or micro batch streaming, if you will. And now we have a higher level um, uh, frameworks and SDKs like uh, Apache Beam incubating, right? So um, do we need to do something with the real time, right? So close to real time. There is Apache Ignite, there's Apache HBase. Um, if you need to, you know, really externalize your schema and uh, be able to share the schema somehow, well, there's H catalog, there's, there's Cassandra and that kind of stuff. So do you need SQL? Like, are you hardcore SQL guy? You don't want to learn, you know, God forbid, Scala or something like this. So sure, there is Ignite, there is Hawk, there is Phoenix, there is Spark again, you know, Spark SQL in this case, stuff like this. Do you need decent visualization tools? Sure, there is Apache Zeppelin again, right? And there is an interesting story about the Apache Zeppelin, which I was uh, mentoring in uh, Apache Incubation, or Apache Incubator. Um, a year ago, I so saw at the Apache uh, Big Data Conference, I believe in uh, Texas, in Austin or something like that. Was it? No, it was in Budapest last year. Anyway. So <laughs> it's irrelevant, but it's funny. So the, the Zeppelin guys, they were having the presentation and they were showing you know, nice screenshots and you know, some demos how they're doing this and that and what's not. And uh, somebody in, uh, uh, in the audience actually stood up and said like, excuse me, is it like open source version of the Databricks uh, UI? And literally the joke caught up so quickly that pretty much like at every Zeppelin talk or every Spark talk, somebody would raise their hand and say like, by the way, could you comment on the fact that the Zeppelin is the open source version of the Databricks UI? <laughs> that was pretty funny. But anyway, so Zeppelin is actually a pretty cool project, so I encourage everyone to check it out if you, if you haven't yet. So at any rate, so let's look at something like this. Um, there is you know, components on the left and there is, you know, characteristics of the system uh, at the, at the oh, oh, well, components on the left, sorry. Yeah, I know. So, and the characteristics of the system um, horizontally, right? So, and I'm not pretending to give you like an exact technical advice of how to build your data pipeline and all the data analytics system, but essentially you can see that if you need transactional SQL support, there is not that much components that, that can help you with, right? If you need real time or close to real time uh, data processing, there is whatever, two components in the whole uh, zoo, right? So if you need machine learning, there's a couple of them and so on and so far, right? So basically having, having this, this kind of approximate metrics, you can figure out actually where and what you'd like to use in order to uh, get you there where you need to be, right? So, and again, it's all kind of hunky-dory, it's, it's nice picture and all, but uh, the problem is you start facing the exponential growth of complexity, right? So all these little projects, they have different requirements, they have completely uncontrollable, you know, proliferation of the version, so each base goes at one pace, Spark goes at the different pace, and, you know, they're not necessarily coordinating with each other in terms of the API's compatibility and binary compatibility. So basically you start seeing the impedance mismatch at the integration points, right? So the serialization needs to be addressed because they, they don't talk the same languages and they don't use the same uh, serialization formats. Um, and as I mentioned, the development is actually sometimes crazily fast, right? So you can see like hundreds of commits a month in the most active projects, right? So how you can keep up with that is, is un, un, unimaginable and the release trains are different. So how you, how you deal with this complexity, how you can actually navigate through this. And fortunately, Apache has an answer for you. So this is Apache Big Top or this huge tent that covers the whole zoo for you, right? The whole circus. Um, and it actually there to, to exactly provide you the, um, the, the, uh, the help with all the complexity, right? So Apache Big Top is, essentially the system, the framework and the philosophy to deal with the complex stacks, right? So you can specify your, your software stack, your components, the versions, whatever it is, and you can actually convert the stack definition into standard Linux packaging, which would be accepted by everyone and, and anyone. And while going there, it will guarantee that all these components in your stack are actually compatible with each other, they guarantee to work with each other, they compatible with, you know, at the API and the binary levels, right? Because we have this extensive integration and system test uh, suites in there. 
It also provides the open, uh, open deployment interfaces and specifications, so basically you can hook it up to any orchestration system in order to get your solution out there, right? So it's not, it's not enough to have the packages, right? It's not enough to have the jar, the jar files and tarballs. You have to get it out in order to make it usable. Cool. So, and uh, uh, that's exactly what the, the framework does. And, and because of that, it's very widely accepted by, by the industry, actually. You know, the Hadoop distributions are using this, um, all of them, in, in a sense. Well, actually, literally all of them. And uh, how you can get it to a spin if you want to. So it's actually real easy, right? So the, the Apache Big Top gives you, essentially, the deployment mechanism that works at pretty much any machine layer, right? So you can do this on VM, you can do this on Docker, you can do this on LXC, you can do this on cloud, anywhere, right? Barebone hardware and stuff. So you can use third-party tools to do the modeling of your cluster solution with Big Top. So for instance, uh, canonical Ubuntu Juju lets you to lay out the model for your data processing stack, which will effectively hide out all the complexity of the deployment and provisioning knowledge for you, from you, right? So all you need to say is like, I want to have HA, HDFS name node plus Spark plus, I don't know, Zeppelin, click a button, get yourself a cluster on whatever, 20 plus uh, different cloud providers, right? So um, we are working actually or contemplating rather the, the way of um, uh, integrate uh, DTK IO uh, engine to be the part of the Apache Big Top. So you would have your own orchestration engine, so you don't need to rely on you know, commercial tools and what's not to uh, manage this sort of deployment uh, into the cloud, right? So in fact, the, the company I'm, I'm doing, the Memcore IO, we're using this DTK, the very DTK IO engine actually to, to uh, do the provisioning. So, and uh, of course, if you need to, you can have the blueprints to coordinate with things, uh, to, to be deployed uh, uh, from Apache Ambari or whatever you're using, right? So, essentially, you have this massive stack of the software, which is whatever, 30 plus components, right? Which are tested on seven plus different Linux distributions on three different hardware platforms, right? So it's x86, it's uh, um, ARM and, and, and open power now, right? So you can actually choose and, and, and pick what you need. So, and interestingly enough, speaking of data, so Apache Big Top is actually um, having the storage variability um, built in, right? So the HCFS uh, uh, concept is actually highly supported, so Hadoop compatible file system. So you can go with HDFS, you can go with Gluster, you can go with QFS, you can go with this and that. We're thinking of adding Ceph and S3, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about questions. Yes? What's the relationship to Big Top and ODPI? Uh, there's not that much relation. So for us, ODPI is yet another downstream, uh, like whatever Cloud Air Horton works. And in fact, actually, I did the work to produce the, the first version of the ODPI reference implementation uh, earlier this year using Big Top. So it took me, oh gosh, six days actually to do this. You guys are working in the ODPI as well? Well, they, well I'm, I'm, I'm consulting them, so they're, they're a client of mine. Um, but yeah, so they, they're using us as a framework and uh, uh, deployment mechanism. Yes? Uh, how the Apache Big Top is different from Apache Ambari, it's very different. So um, Apache Ambari is essentially a cluster monitor software. Or if you go a little bit wider, you can say that it's an orchestration system, which is not exactly, but anyway. So Apache Big Top is deployment, development, and testing framework for the software stacks. So Ambari is a tool set that allow you to deploy and monitor one particular stack, namely Apache Hadoop stack. So with Big Top, you can actually build anything. You can build a LAMP stack, you can build Hadoop stack, you can do whatever, right? So it's a universal framework actually for the production of complex, complex stacks. And that's pretty much summarizes and close the session. Thank you very much.